Hello. Uh, in the last video, we saw how to find the potential function phi when your intuition might fail you. Um, we, we were able to find it by integrating p with respect to x, then integrating q with respect to y, and then arguing about the terms that are left over. When you integrate p with respect to x, you don't go plus c on that. You go plus some function who could have some y's in it. When you integrate q with respect to y, you don't go plus c on that, you go plus some function who could have some x's in it. And so this argument is okay, it works, but we're going to find that there's better ways to do it. And then what do we do with this? Why do we care about this? Well, what happens is that we can take this and use it to be able to evaluate a line integral. If my, if my function, um, if my line integral involves that same particular vector field and I'm independent of path, I don't care which path I take, any curve that goes between those two points, then what I can do is go find out what that function is, <coughs> and I can evaluate the function. Sorry, the function is there. Okay, and I can then plug into the function. The ending point comes first, and then the starting point, and I subtract phi at the ending point, um, minus phi at the starting point is the value of the line integral. Okay, all right, great. Let's look at a, another example here where uh, we have a vector field and we're moving along a curve that is elliptical, half of an ellipse. We'll call that curve C. The curve is really not even described as, uh, with, you know, with per, not parametrized, it's just described as the elliptical path that goes um, from two on the x-axis up to three on the y-axis down to minus two on the x-axis. We could parametrize it, but really that's not the way to go here. Okay, we're gonna see there's gonna be a couple approaches. So let's go and find out what's what's going on with the p and the q. Is it possible that it's independent of path? Do we have to take that path? So if p is equal to 2x plus e to the minus y, and q is equal to 4y minus x e to the minus y, is it true that py equals qx? Well, py is minus e to the minus y, and so is qx. Well, that's great. f is the gradient field for some potential function phi. The way we can find phi is by integrating. Integrate p with respect to x. We'll get x squared plus x e to the minus y, plus maybe some function who has some y's in it. Integrate q with respect to y. We'll get y squared 2y squared plus x e to the minus y, plus some function who could have an x in it. Okay. These are both equal to phi, so these should be equal to each other. Any mixed any terms with mixed uh, variables in it should cancel. And we have the following statement. x squared plus some function of y only is equal to 2y squared plus some function of x only. How could that be? How could x squared plus a function of y be equal to 2y squared plus a function of x? It's just going to be that the, the, um, the function of x is the x squared and the function of y is the 2y squared. Okay, you have your function now and you're ready to go. As far as um, figuring out the line integral value, you have minus 2, 0 as your ending point. 2, 0 as your starting point. And so, um, let's think of this value by just plugging it. Uh, plugging in a negative 2 and a 0 gives you a 2. Plugging in a 2 and a 0 gives you a 6. And then subtracting these gives you a negative 4. All right, great. Let's take that same question. Okay. And let me just show you a different like technique on that. Um, you integrate P, you get that value. Don't go integrate Q. What you can do now is, since this is phi, you can take its Y partial and set it equal to Q. So if I, uh, uh, the first term has no y's in it, the second term's derivative is minus x e to the minus y with respect to y. The third term, you could use a prime symbol for that. I mean, yes, it's, you know, 
dy, you know, it's the, it's, we can use partial symbols for sure, del of this guy with respect to y, but it's a single variable guy. Let's use his prime. So minus x e to the minus y plus g prime of y, we set this equal to q because phi has, as its y partial, exactly q. So in doing that, then, you cancel out the terms that have the x's in them, and then your, jo your job basically is to figure out what g of y is. Now you can do it. You know what g prime of y is, so you integrate to find out what g of y is. And so this is, a, a th this is the technique that I normally use when I'm doing a 2D. Um, when I'm doing a 3D, I'll show you what I use for that in, in another video, but um, it's similar to the previous technique that we did without the argument part. And so this is it. We have our x squared, we have our x e to the minus y, and the g of y was 2y squared uh, plus a constant. In evaluating, though, you know you don't have to use the constant because the plus c would cancel from the, from the c from the other part when you do phi of the ending minus phi of the starting. Okay, great. So that's two ways to do it where you go find the phi, where you employ the fundamental theorem of line integrals. But you have another option. You, you, you were given this along that curve, but we could, since it's independent of path, we could pick another curve. We could pick a, we could pick a more convenient path. We could pick a path that goes directly along the x-axis. Okay. From 2 to negative 2. Because we're going backwards like this on the x-axis, I think it's best to parameterize the path by letting instead of x being equal to t, let x equal to negative t. Then t, which is supposed to start, um, you know, t, uh, you're, you're supposed to start at x equals 2, so then that makes t equal to negative 2. You're supposed to end at x equal to negative 2. That makes t equal to 2. Uh, 0, for y, because you're on the x-axis. So you plug these in to a, a, um, a vector r, you take its derivative, you get dr, you reply f, um, you have to rewrite f on, on c1. So c, uh, c1 is this new path here. Rewrite f, replace all your x's with negative t's, replace all your y's with zeros. So we'll, instead of 2x plus e to the minus y, you're going to have negative 2t plus 1. And, so, and then for the next part, you don't even have to worry about what that is. It'll be 0 um plus t or well, it'll be t but you know what it doesn't matter as soon as you see a zero in dr whatever's in that second component of f it doesn't matter because it's going to get dotted with that it's going to be multiplied by zero so you can just ignore it just put something to hold its place blah is what i put all right so you take your dot product and you get 2t minus 1. that's what you're integrating with respect to t as t goes from minus 2 to 2. So you get 4 minus 2. Be careful here. On the second way, on the, uh, by plugging in negative 2, you get 4 plus 2. Subtract. 4s cancel out. And you get that same minus 4 from before. Okay? So find the phi or pick a convenient path. Or you could always parameterize the path you're given. I don't recommend that, though. All right, great. And so let's just do a quick review slide here. So when qx equals py, or for the 3D check, we're going to do a 3D example coming up soon in another video. Um, if the 3D check holds, the line integral is independent of path. You can always use the given path. That's not going to, you know, you can always do that. That will never change. But we found that when you're independent of path, though, you can pick a convenient path made up of horizontal or vertical lines especially if they're along the x or the y axis. That makes everything great. And now there's a third, no, no, there's definitely a third option, which is to use the fundamental theorem of line integrals, abbreviated FTLI here, where you go find out what phi is and you evaluate the ending point. Um, you evaluate phi at the ending point and subtract what you get by evaluating phi at the starting point. When it's time to find phi, you have options. You could integrate each of these, integrate P with respect to X, integrate Q with respect to Y, integrate R with respect to Z. You could integrate all these guys, and then you have to make a detailed argument. 
about the extra functions that come in from the plus the constant part. You could, um, in 2D though, what you could do is uh, integrate P with respect to X, that's phi, take its Y partial and set it equal to Q. And then you integrate to find out what G of Y is. All right. And then the third method, which I think I prefer for 3D, is called the sifting method. I, I, I call it the sifting method. You do the same thing you do with the integrate, integrate, integrate method, but then you just collect all the unique terms. And that's it. That'll be what phi is. No need for the argument. I want to show you how bad the argument is and how nice this shortcut sifting method is. I'm going to make a whole video of me going through a 3D argument. It is a total mess. All right. Sorry this video went so long. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer, helping you through this multivariable calculus journey. Um, working through the fundamental theorem of line integrals. We've got a couple more videos to go. And uh, please comment down below, like, and subscribe. And reach out to me. Find your way to my webpage if you want some extra resources. See you in the next video.